By the end of this video, you will be able to answer the following key points about the game. The freak attack is rook g1, then g4. In the final, we have Nepo Omniachi against Carlsen. Nepo has white, Carlsen has black. This was the most exciting game of day one. Both players start with 15 minutes on the clock, plus 10 seconds per move. Let's take it from the top. e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4. Take, take, knight f6, knight c3, a6. We have the knight off. Just a quick player intro. Ian is Russian number one. World top 10 and Carlsen is Norwegian and world number one. Today Ian goes for rook g1. The point is to go g4, g5 really quickly. But Carlsen goes b5 attacking on the queen side. Ian goes g4. Bishop b7 attacking the center and Ian invites Magnus to take with g5. Knight takes e4 taking a central pawn. Take, take and now a4. A crazy position already. White has launched his g-pawn and now launches his a-pawn. Carlsen struck in the center with e5. I don't think he would have played this move if he knew white was going to play a takes b5, giving up a knight. Now another option was to just close down the queen side, a move like b4. Black is doing okay. However, Carlsen struck in the center with e5, a takes b5, offering the knight as a sacrifice. A takes b5 and bishop e7 played. Let's check out what happens if you take the knight. Queen takes d4. In this position, white has got his queen and two rooks in the game. The rook on a1 is in the game because the a file is working in his favor. Queen e7, rook g3. Planning rook e3, winning the bishop. It's a really cool move here. If d5, we can take on a6 and then... White's got so many pawns on the queen side, the bishop can come to b5 with check. The bishop on e4 is a little bit stranded. White can still go rook g3 to e3, kick the bishop away. So bishop e7 played by Carlsen and now rook g4. A great move because Ian doesn't want the bishop on e4 to control the f5 square. Now the rook attacks the bishop, but just because you attack my piece doesn't mean I have to move it. A takes b5 played. So the rooks attack each other on the a file. The rook on g4 attacks the bishop, the pawn on e5 attacks the knight on d4, so what to play now? Bishop takes b5, check, knight d7. So, still the same situation. Here Ian plays a really good move, bishop d2. Now, if we just pause and consider what's happening. Knight and bishop are attacked, rooks are attacked. So Ian doesn't want to trade rooks on the a file, he wants to go bishop d2, inviting a trade. So if rook takes rook, queen takes rook. So then white gets his queen on the a file. Bishop d2, great move, and now bishop b7. So notice the last five moves, the knight on d4 has been hanging, but Carlsen has not had the chance to take it. Amazing stuff from white. Carlsen chooses to retreat the bishop back to b7, and now allowing knight f5. So the knight has been hanging for the last five moves, and in it goes. Knight f5, great move, and white is taking over. Castle. And in his position, rook takes a8 was played, the human move, and then after take, rook h4, planning a kingside attack. But here there was the incredible move, rook gA4. This is the best rook swing I've ever seen, because what is the idea of this move? Well, if we play a move like rook c8, keeping the rooks on, then bishop a5 is the point to control the a5 square. Now, the queen has to move to e8, and then knight takes d6, forking queen and Rook, so take, take, and the knight is going to fall. After bishop a5, if you block with the knight, you can remove the defender. You can take the knight, take, and then the bishop is hanging. Forking king and rook, and white will be up too much material. The best line in this crazy rook swing variation is to swap off rooks, take, take, and then bishop takes g5, which Carlsen saw as the best option, giving up a piece, trying to get a few pawns. Bishop takes g5, take, bishop takes d7, queen g1, check, king d2. Really nice, this bishop is protecting knight and rook. Queen takes f2 check and queen e2 just blocking. Notice it is still possible to lose this position by playing a normal looking move like king c1 because bishop f3 and now the queen has run out of squares on the back. Just goes to show you can lose any position. Bishop f3 and the queen, when it 
goes up from the back rank, then we can check on the back and then it's mate. So that is a very harsh variation. Now back to reality, after rook takes rook, bishop takes rook, rook h4, planning queen h5. So Carlson plays g6, stopping the queen entering. Queen g4 anyway, because it plans to go to h3, another way to get to the h-file. Knight c5 played, you don't want to play g takes f5 because queen h5. Knight c5 played in the game, and now queen h3. Planning rook takes h7, and then checkmate on g7 or h8. But there is a crazy move here, beginning with king f1. What on earth does this king move do? Well, it gets out of a very important check. King f1. If you go knight e6, the idea is bishop a5. Incredible. I've never seen that two bishops slice the board like this. If you take the bishop, best is blocking with the knight, but we're going to have a look at queen takes bishop. Knight e7 check, king h8, and a nice pattern to remember. Rook takes h7 check, take, queen h4 check, the king has to go to g7 and then queen h6 mate. Bishop a5, if you block with the knight, then queen h3. Bishop takes g5, rook takes a7, and we've got mate on two squares, g7 or h8. If you take the knight, then bishop takes c7 is very useful, deflecting the queen. If you play queen takes bishop, then check, check, and then you take the rook. Best move here is to go queen f6 and then rook h5 is a really cool move because it looks like black has defended against the attack. Four pawns each, but the attack has only just begun. Rook h5 is so good because there are two threats. Queen g3, winning the bishop on g5, but also bishop takes d6, deflecting the queen away from the protection of the bishop. So rook h5 and white is winning. Queen h3 played, and Carlson won h5, allowing white to crash through with rook takes h5. A brilliant way out, impossible to see, is bishop takes g5. Rook takes h7, threatening mate on two squares. Bishop takes d2, check. King takes d2, queen g5, check. King c3, knight e4, check, king b4. The king has run all the way from e1. Is it going to hide? White certainly hopes so, but black can now play queen d2, check, king a3, queen a5, check. Bishop a4, queen c5, check. And let's just take a moment just to appreciate the journey of the queen. It started on d8 to g5 to d2 to a5 to c5. Giving lots of checks, king a2, queen c4, check, and then we've got a perpetual coming up, check, check. Notice if white is being a bit greedy with king b1, you can't go queen f1, there's a queen there, but knight d2, check. Forces the queens to come off, the king goes here, queen f1, check, take, take, no more attack. So that was an incredible way out, however, back to reality h5 played, rook takes h5, crashing through, take, queen takes h5, and the idea is to checkmate on g7. So Carlson goes knight e6, but just because you've got a knight defending the g7 square, uh, doesn't mean you've got everything covered. So white goes for another attacking move. White just penetrates the position with g6, threatening queen h7, checkmate. And here the game is over. Let's consider a few options. They all lose. Rook e8 loses to checkmate here. If knight g5 guarding the h7 square, then we remove the defender to the square. If you take, then queen h7 is mate. It is possible to throw in a few checks with queen a5 check. It does look a bit dangerous, but there's still a way out. King f1. If we go queen takes b5 check, king g1, so we're safe. One more option. If you take the pawn, then queen check. The king can only go in the corner. Check first, king goes back, and then we can take the knight. If you go in the corner again, then we have check, and then mate on g7, because we've removed the defender for the g7 square. So best is rook f7, but then knight h6, check, winning the rook. Queen takes f7, check, the king goes in the corner, and here we can just stop it, because why is a piece up? Notice you're a piece up, so you might as well use it in the attack. So let's bring the bishop back. That hasn't done anything since it took a pawn with check on b5. So let's just use your extra piece. Bishop d3, threatening mate on h7. So if you block, then bishop c3, check, opening up the other diagonal, and that is game over. You can block with the bishop, but then bishop takes f6, check, game over. Take, and then you can just take the queen, but if you've got mate, just go for it. Queen g8 is checkmate. So that was the best game of day one. Here is the table for day one. Carlsen ended up taking the match. They played four games at the start. It ended 2-2. Then it went to blitz and Carlsen won both games. Here are the key points about the game. 
Here are the many incredible rook moves in the game. It all started with rook g1, the freak attack, then came rook g4, and then the impossible rook g a4. Swinging the rook to the queen side. A peace sacrifice offered on move 10, this was a knight on d4. It wasn't taken by move 14, and then it moved to f5. When you attack a piece, it does not mean you have to move it. And then the impossible king move to f1. To threaten bishop a5, attacking the queen. As long as it is not a check, then king f1 was a brilliant move to get out of the way. Thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. If you enjoyed the show, then give the video a like and subscribe to the channel at the same time. Make sure you hit that bell, because then you'll get notified each time I release a new video.